and welcome to my first Q&A video. My name is Martine and I am a 21 year old, I've just turned 21 which is crazy, uh, year old blogger and Norwegian living in London. Uh, I'm the blogger behind a tiny bit beautiful.com which is a lifestyle personal blog and now I've also started, well started up my YouTube channel again. So if you're watching this from YouTube, welcome, please subscribe and if you're uh, one of my readers, thank you so much for watching my video. It really means a lot. I do really like making videos so we'll see if this goes well. Also, <laughs> I always find it so weird when YouTubers have a cup of tea with them <laughs> in the YouTube video and they're like, oh, grab a cup of tea and then sit down and have a chatty video. But like, when you're talking, you never have the time to actually drink this tea. So I feel a bit weird, but my cup is nice. I bought this a paper chase and it says, Faith Babe, and uh, that's me. I'm my own Faith Babe, so that's why I have this cup. But yeah, let's get to the questions because I know myself and I blabber on way too long and then I don't actually get to the, the point, so. First question is from Sarah and she asked me, what is your favorite book, top three? So my top three books, basically. And this is always so hard because I kind of have different favorites like some of them are like like to die for favorites i've had since i was a kid and others are books that i've recently found and that i really like now so i don't know which one to choose but one of my favorite books must be the one that i just had in my uh january book of the month um blog post which was the golden compass golden compass yeah uh by philip pullman basically the whole like his dark material series is one of my absolute favourites that I've loved since I was a kid and also Harry Potter of course <laughs> if you know me or if you've read my blog you you know that I'm a die-hard Harry Potter fan so those two definitely and for the third one I don't know which one to choose because there are so many good books that I've read and I don't kind of I don't want to like say that one is better than the other but I just know that his dark materials and Harry Potter is like absolute favourites because those were books that I could read again and again and get the same like lovely feeling that you just get warm, up, warm all over and you kind of feel like it's home you know. Sandrine asked me what is the best part about living in London and the best part about living in London I think must be everything that you can do here like I come from a kind of medium sized city and you kind of you could get bored very easily because if you have you, you, when you grew up there you've kind of done all the things they were able to do that and of course I've had, I've had a lot of fun with my friends but like just last summer when I was back in home back home um, to work over the summer and be with my family uh, most of my friends were actually gone for the summer so I didn't have anyone to be with and I realized how boring <laughs> my city is so that's why I love London so much because you can never run out of things to do like there's always a new path of city you can explore or a, something new to do like even if you've done everything and you've, you've lived here for years there's always going to be a new like musical on or a new show or even just a new like exhibition at a free museum so you never ever run out of things to do which I really really like and also the amount of people that different people that live here is also amazing like I've met so many people from different parts of the world like I have one friend from Poland another friend from uh, from China and even my flatmates like he's Czech and Indian heritage and British people of course, it's just, it's great to meet all those types of people and learn so many things from, from different cultures that you would never learn unless you actually spoke to people from that place. And also she asked what is my favourite scam character and that is of course Noda because she's a feminist and she's like girl power um, but <laughs> a little secret, I actually haven't finished scam, I still haven't seen the fourth, fourth season with um, Sana so she might be my new favourite, who knows, never seen it should probably do that but I'm lazy and um, I just don't have the time to watch anything like at all. I tried to watch Mad Men on Netflix but that's just also something I do like once in a blue moon. <laughs> a third question from Sandrine is my dream job and my dream job would be blogging full time and I would like to work in a magazine editorial. I just really want to be creative and be with other creative people that like to do the same things as me. I don't want to work in like a glossy magazine because I'm not into, I'm not into that kind of beauty beauty um, specialism where you just you kind of you earn money on women feeling bad about themselves and then you want to give them products and clothes and stuff like that to make them feel better about themselves and it's, you're kind of like feeding off the fact that they don't like themselves and I don't like that. I like to work in a magazine like um, 
I'm trying to come up with an example, Frankie, for example, or like type of indie magazines where they actually they actually talk about like people and interests and hobbies and like passions and actually like the, the people, the women they're speaking to instead of just like how they look. Like I want to ask women, so what is your passion instead of what is your favourite lip gloss, you know? So yeah, well I would like to work in a magazine but not a glossy magazine, <laughs> that's basically my answer for that one. And then Carolina asked me if I, she asked me where do I want to settle down in the future? Which is a good question because I live in London right now and as I've said on my blog I do really want to keep living in London. But I don't think I would settle down here. Like if I were to have kids one day and get married and all that, it would have to be in Norway if I'm honest. Um, but then again I don't really know if I want to do that in my future, like I don't know if I want that A4 life. I don't know if I'm ready for kids, I don't know if I want to get married, so for now I know that I want to stay in London, live in London, maybe move to another place in Europe or the world and, and work there and be like independent and live on my own and have friends and you know surround myself with great people. And someone named A asked me if I could tell you about my experiences with, with moving to London, um, especially when it comes to my choice of studies, my university, economy and all that stuff. So I'll kind of try to be brief because there's a lot to talk about and I could definitely do like a whole video just about living in London. Um, so tell me if you want to hear that, if you want to listen to that, if you want to watch that because I'll make it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, when it comes to economy, living in London is, is definitely expensive but I don't think it's the most expensive city that you could live in uh, by far. Um, like Living here is actually pretty cheap, like when it comes to buying food, going out, um, kind of... Um, yeah, buying buying things like food and and ex like going to the cinema and I don't know doing things is kind of cheap compared to Norway because Norway is really expensive. Uh, but like renting in London is 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 really pricey. Uh, we were actually in uh, the first floor of um, of a house in Northwest London, so it's kind of big, but it's like a really really nice house. It's just refurnished, and we have three bedrooms split like uh, shared between four people. So I'm pretty happy with our living conditions, like it's actually pretty like reasonable, but I know a lot of other people are struggling a lot with finding a place that's actually decent and still a good price because things are really expensive and then still looks bad, you know? Um, so that's just something to think about if you want to move to London. It is expensive to rent, but then again, cheaper to enjoy yourself. And then when it comes to studies, um, I'm studying uh, for a bachelor at Middlesex University in creative writing and journalism. And if I'm being honest, I kind of think I took the wrong course uh, because I've always liked writing and I really thought a few years ago that writing was my passion, but I've kind of grown out of it and it's not my, like, I really love it, but it's not my passion. Like I wouldn't want to, you know, like have blood, sweat and tears to be a writer. I'd rather do something else, you know? Um, so I do think I should probably have chosen like media studies or something like that because I think I'd enjoy that a lot more. But I do... I do enjoy myself at the, study, uh, at the course I'm doing now, I just wish I kind of took something else. Uh, but then again, I could always do work experience in the field that I actually enjoy and then get, get a job in that. Uh, but Middlesex University is, yeah, it's a great uni, I'm really enjoying it. It's a great campus, which is my favourite part because it's all at one campus instead of being spread around at, in London. Um, so that was really important to me when I chose what university I wanted to go to. I didn't want the university to look great on the picture but then me and my course was placed in some shabby building at the other side of the city you know I wanted to be at the uni I was actually looking to go to you know uh, but it is a bit chaotic at times like Middlesex they, they need to get their shit together <laughs> kind of so it's a bit of like a mess and it annoys me that we have a lot of afternoon classes and especially last year we had every single day we had afternoon classes and I tried to take this up with my course leader but then she basically said that a lot of people wanted to have afternoon classes because they wanted to uh, go to work in the day, like they had a full-time job. But then I was like, if you do a full-time, like, if you're studying for a full-time bachelor, like a full-time student, you can't have a full-time job as, at the same time. Like, I'm not paying to go to some afternoon class in London, I'm paying to go to university and be a full-time student. So that was really annoying. Uh, but it's a bit better this year, just by chance, like, I don't think she did anything about it, the course leader. But it's a bit better and, and yeah, it's a good it's a good uni. You know how it is with a with a uni with like three thousand thirty thousand students. Of course it's gonna be a bit chaotic 
And then uh, Constanza asked me if I could plan my perfect day, how would it go? Um, I feel like I'm going to have kind of like a boring answer for this one because my perfect day would start early in the morning with a cup of coffee and then I would get ready and go to a coffee shop and have lunch and then I would walk all day, like I would either be like in London or any other big city and I would just walk around and book shops and you know see the city, it would have to be like a nice day with the sun but not too hot, it had to be like nice type of weather and just walk around sightseeing and then in the evening going to a restaurant, having food, and then going home early and watching a YouTube video. <laughs> That's my perfect day because I'm not like, I wouldn't like to be up that late and I just want to be relaxed and, and have great food and drink coffee and have a sun, you know. <laughs> and what is, what's the name of my, <clears throat> sorry, what is the name of my favourite cafe and what do I like to eat there? So my favourite coffee shop used to be Campos Canal Cafe in Camden, but they've actually, I think that owner actually died, which is pretty sad and his wife took over and she changed the name to Heaven and they don't have the same like food options and drink options that they had before. The coffee shop is really really nice um, because it's kind of, uh, it's in Camden and the bridge and it's hanging over the canal, that's therefore the name. So you can kind of, when you sit towards the window, it's like lots of windows and you can see out on the canal and it's just really really beautiful and they used to have lots of vegan options, like it used to be like a vegan coffee shop with with coffee and juices and food but now they they don't have anything anymore so that's really sad I hope it's gonna go back and maybe sh the wife just needs some time because obviously if it's true that her husband died uh, which one of the employees told me it's really sad um, another one of my favourite coffee shops is um, I don't know how to say this by the way so sorry but it's called Le Pen Quotidien I think Le Pen Quotidien I don't know I think it's Belgium or French and it's I, I don't know if the, the name is French, but it's a Belgium, Bel, Belgian, Bel, what? Basically, it's a coffee shop in Hampstead, and they have great, co uh, great hot chocolate, great like um, pastries, great food, great everything, and it's actually a chain of coffee shops. So you can go to anyone in in London, and they have more of them. But my favourite one is the one in Hampstead because it's just a really nice street. It's in the Hampstead High Street, and the people working there are super nice. So I really like that place. And also another favourite is actually one that Karina recommended Yumcha for me, which was also one of my favourite coffee shops because it's great to sit down and work in because it's like a kind of like office environment where you can actually sit there for a long while without feeling bad about just having like one coffee, you know. And then Renata asked me if I have any advice for how to relax and kind of chill out after a really stressful day. And that would be kind of the same thing as I said in my perfect day, which is basically just go home early, watch YouTube videos, drink tea, have a bath and all that stuff. Like I literally do that every single night. I just, that's my, I have to do that in the evening unless I have a lot of work to do. But like hopefully I kind of take the time in the evening to make myself a cup of tea, sit down on my bed, watch a YouTube video or maybe like an episode of Mad Men if I have the time. And if I'm feeling extra like spa day, I'll have a bath with a bath bum. She also asked me, what do I like most about myself? I do like myself a lot uh, because I've kind of worked on self-love and I think it's really, really, really important to love yourself and of course you can't do that all the time, like there's going to be days and weeks and months where I feel like shit but um, I'm still going to try my best to love myself and what I like most is how outgoing I am I think, or like how easily I can talk to people. Well I value that about myself, the fact that I can go and talk to people and kind of be open to them and get to know people and not be shy. That's the thing I like about myself. Uh, Renata also asked me, what, where do I find my inspiration to blog? And I definitely find my inspiration from like just other bloggers because there are so many out there. I'll find inspiration just by seeing someone else putting a blog post up. I'll be like, oh, I wanna do that. I just wanna blog, I wanna write something today. So that's mostly where I find my inspiration. And she also asked me what way the toilet roll is supposed to hang because I wrote that as a joke in my blog post. And I always hang it with the um, the toilet, like the paper coming out on the outside, which is the only correct way to hang it. Duh. Also, Silly had so many questions for me, so thank you so much. They were really, really nice questions. Um, she asked me what my favourite dessert is, and that is cake, I think, some type of cake. Oh my god, maybe apple crumble pie with ice cream. I think that that's my favourite dessert. Or like um, cheesecake, I love cheesecake. And also just Jen Ben and Jerry's ice cream with cookie dough is my fave. 
Silly also asked me if I could choose between a warm air balloon, a submarine, or an umbrella like a Mary Poppins, which one would I use to travel with? And I think I'd have to choose Mary Poppins umbrella because I would love to fly, like just open up my umbrella and just fly all over. And also I just really like that film, it's just, it's a great film. What has been my best and my worst age so far in life and why? And I think actually my best age is either when I was 19 or 20. I remember my birthday last year, which because it's a year ago, it's so crazy. Um, and it was just the best birthday ever. I just felt so good. And this past year, even though I had like I've had setbacks and it hasn't been like all fun and games, but I still just felt so good about myself. And I'm actually like love myself this year, which I haven't done before, which feels great. I just feel, felt really, really thankful for that. Being living in London, having my friends, having my boyfriend, feeling good about myself, being confident. It's just been really nice. And my worst age, I think it will, uh, it has to be either when I was like. 15, 16, when I just felt horrible about myself, I was depressed, it was not a good age, this was like the first year of, of high school slash college slash Virgona, depends on where you're from, that was the, the time, and I was just not, I, I, I used to actually hate myself, which is so sad to think about now, because now I really like myself, and I just, yeah, I used to be my worst enemy, really, and also kind of the year of when I was 17 was also pretty bad when I was about to be a grown up and, you know, live my life and be independent and instead I just felt horrible and it's not a good time. But I guess if you're in school right now and you feel bad and you don't like yourself, just know that it will get better. And even if you kind of can't deal with it, it's gonna just resolve itself by itself because you're not gonna be the same person in a few years or even in a few months that you are now. So even if you kind of feel so bad about yourself and you don't know how to stop feeling bad about yourself it's gonna change and you're, you're gonna change and it's gonna get better I promise and I guess I'm just praying that I won't go back to that place again that I was because that was pretty bad um, but even if I do I know it'll pass and I'll feel bad I'll feel better about myself again the last question from Celia is uh, if I could choose anywhere if I could go anywhere with anyone tomorrow, where would I go and who would I bring? And since I was just in Australia with my best friends, I think I would have to choose either my mum or my boyfriend because I would love to go somewhere with my mum and just be the two of us and just have a nice time without worrying about anything. But I would also like to go with my boyfriend because, you know, I love his company uh, and I would like to go to New Zealand. And um, I know my boyfriend wouldn't like to go to New Zealand and I don't think my mum would like to go to New Zealand either. I'll go alone, you know? <laughs> because I don't really want to go to New Zealand but yeah if I could bring in one it would be either those two and New Zealand because that seems like a great place and I really want to go there but it's so expensive that was all of the questions I've done them all and this video might be a bit too long but then I'll just cut it down but I think I managed to answer everything quickly enough for all of the questions to be in it thank you so much for all the questions and thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my YouTube channel and please like my Facebook page for my blog because those places are the places you'll see when I publish something new. Uh, I managed to nearly drink all of my tea, there's still some left and it's cold but that's fine because I never managed to drink up my tea without reheating it at least twice so I think this is actually pretty impressive for me to be. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video and in the next blog post. Bye! Boom, brown.